Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's video we're going to install Mac OS Monterey on VMware Workstation 16. Please note this will work with ESXi 6.7, ESXi 7, and also Workstation 15. Although I will let everybody know that if you're going to use something older than VMware ESXi 7 or Workstation Pro 16, you're probably going to experience some kind of bugs and glitches with it. Um, so it is recommended to do this in Workstation 16. You're also probably here is because you probably Googled or checked out other videos and found out that they're all bogus. They will do the initial install, but then you, when you reboot, its system crashes, VMware tools aren't working, or the installer they give you does not work. Well, I went ahead and took care of all that problems for you. Down below in the description, I went ahead and created the unlocker down there. You have your VMware workstation if you want to download it from down there. And you also will be able to download um, the three-part Mac OS installer ISO file. You don't have to create it. It's not a DMG file. It's not a pre-made VMX file, nothing. You're all ready to go. And I'm going to show you step-by-step step in this video how to do it from start to finish and how to get your device to actually reboot and work properly so that you can use it, not just use it once and then just cry for a little bit. So without further ado, let's get it going here and get this rolling. <clears throat> so the first thing you wanna do outside of having your VMware workstation installed is you wanna go down the description below and you need to download a couple of files. If you haven't done the um, patching or the unlocking of VMware Workstation or ESXi, depending on what you're doing this on. You can go ahead and check my previous videos or for Workstation, click the link above. And for ESXi, go ahead and click the link above again for ESXi. Or you can wait to the end of the video for both of them. In this case being here, you're gonna go ahead and download a couple things. So here I went ahead and downloaded Mac OS Monterey by introzoom.com. This is where I got this. I have used probably about three or four different versions of this. All of them either failed, didn't work. This is the only one I was able to actually download, extract, and worked 110%. So definitely a shout out to introzoom.com for doing a fantastic job. Um, I also have seen people say they've downloaded this and had some issues. So more than likely, it's probably a corrupt download because it is a three-parter. Um, I would just go back and just re-download them. It's a lot faster doing it this way than downloading the 16 gigs of it. You're also gonna need the Darwin tools, and that's a part of the unlocker. Again, down in the description below, you'll be able to download this ISO directly if you don't wanna download the whole unlocker and you're already ahead of the game. Okay, so with that being said, I also have our notes here. I'm gonna show them real quickly. So here's some notes. Again, there's the unlocker tools, here's all this. This is all down in the description below. This section right here for the VMX file is 100% optional. I do want you to know that. I did not do this at all and everything still worked just fine. I always add the SMC version just because it's a habit, but again, I didn't actually have to add any of this and it did work. Now I do believe once it's added beta testing, we will have to probably add a few things like these three. Um, this is obviously, I've seen this in other videos and people adding this and honestly, if you're not running a, a eight core processor, this is kind of useless. Um, and again, I've never found a reason for this because my CPU doesn't dump. If you're getting CPU dumps, this is what this is meant for, um, to kind of correct the actual timing with it. But let's go ahead and get this going here. So I'm assuming everything's all ready to go. This is the Mac beta we just, I just had up and running. So new virtual machine. I always like doing custom um, just because I want to make sure I tweak everything possible, but you can do typical. So custom workstation 16. All right, from here, I'm going to go ahead and actually add the ISO now. All right, it won't detect it, but that's perfectly fine. Now from here, if you don't have Mac 11.1 or 11 and 10.15, it's okay. You can do 10.15, but if you're following along with me, Mac OS 11.1, because 12 is not technically available yet. So for this being here, I'm just gonna write Mont. Right, you can name it whatever makes you feel good. Now here is where the CPU IDs come in with that. Recommended to do it is a, is a two and a two. 
All right. As you can see here, it may not run properly because one, I don't have two processors built into it. So it's going to try to virtualize it. And then the same thing with the cores. Um, but in this case being one will just work one in four would work. Um, again, it's a preference for you. You need eight gigs for it to run properly. So if you're doing this on a system that has 16 gigs, you don't have enough power. You need to have a system with 32 gigs or more for this to run properly with your windows or Linux. Um, in this case being, I'm going to do four gigs just because it is for you know, demonstration purposes, but it will work with eight gigs. Use bridge networking. Go ahead and leave the control the way it is. SATA works just fine. Or if you want to use NVMe, you're more than welcome to. Create a new. Recommending for if you're going to use this, 120 gigs minimum. Um, but for just installation purposes, 60 is just fine. And again, I would split into multiple disks if you're using a higher number. But in this case being because I'm going to destroy this after we're done with the video, I'm just going to put in a single. Go ahead and click Next. And then click Finish. There we go. So now we just go back in here and we just take a quick look at everything here just to make sure everything is the way I want it to be. There's our CDs, hard drives okay. Over here, that's fine. Boots UEFI, perfect. No secure boot is enabled for it, perfect. And then guest isolation, just make sure enable drop and drag and this is turned on. Sometimes it's disabled, I don't know why, but make sure it's turned on for that. Go ahead and click okay. All right, so now what we can do and what I always end up doing is I'm going to open the directory, open the VMX file in Notepad++ because that's my favorite editor, but you can use Notepad if you would like. And then here is our setup with this. And again, I always just add the SMC version to it. I never not with Max. So, but again, like I said, I didn't add any of it before and it still worked just fine. All right. If you want to be, if you want to guarantee not to have any issues, you can always add the hardware ID and that as well. And you know what, for this video, let's go ahead and add it. I'm giving you all the stuff right now in the, in the link below. So might as well add everything. I just don't add the CPU IDs. I don't think they're, they're necessary unless you're getting a CPU dump and you'll know you're getting a CPU dump because it tells you it is. Okay, so now I guess we're all ready to do this. Let's get this thing powered on. Close that out. Okay, and we're just going to sit here and wait for this to boot. This could take roughly around two minutes, but with a little bit of camera magic, I'm just going to hop forward a little bit because this video is going to be a little longer than needed. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and click our language. Click Disk Utility because we actually now have to create the part, the, the hard drive or initialize the hard drive for Mac to be installed, just like any other Mac that we've ever done. All right, so from here it looks a little wonky. Nobody knows what's going on here. That's quite all right. Go up to the top because it's VMware Virtual SATA. That's where we put it. There is my hard drive size that I chose. Click Erase. Give it a name. If I can spell Mac OS. Oops, hit the wrong button there. Mac OS, click erase, click done. And you go ahead and close out of this. Now let's get this thing installed. Go ahead and click continue. Now you may see some lagging going on my computer and that is again, I just don't have enough resources on the device I'm using to make it run at full speed. Um, but on my ESXi server, it is actually running fine where I'm able to give it more cores and more um, you know, RAM, you know, dedicated to it. So go ahead and click your Mac OS drive and click continue. Okay. So this is going to take roughly around 15 minutes to get the base and line install. It will reboot once it will do another 30 minute to 45 minute install. Again, depending on how much RAM and you know, pretty much how much resources you've allocated to this. And then after that, I'll reboot one more time, do another few more minutes, and then we'll be able to get into our out-of-box experience, I guess, as they call it. Because I really don't know what they call that, you know, in Mac. They call that in Windows, so. But with a little more camera magic, I'm going to go ahead, jump further in the video here, because um, nobody wants to stare at 45 minutes of this. <clears throat> wow. Okay. 
So a quite a while later, um, again, your experience will vary depending on what you allocated to your virtual machine and how your hardware is. So now it's time for the out of a box experience. Okay. And again, you're going to see it kind of run a little laggy and slow on my system. That's perfectly fine just because I did not give it a ton of resources to use. So go ahead and just keep clicking continue until you get to there. Um, the internet connection section here, just leave it as DHCP. Just click click and continue. It's going to do some checking. It's going to yell at you saying it's not connected to the internet and we know that. Go ahead and click continue again. And like I said, I do apologize for this very slow setup here, but it's the only way I'll be able to get this out to you. Otherwise you're going to be watching videos from people who have no idea what they're doing and keep giving you bad information. Go ahead and click agree, more agree, sign your life away. Yes. So now we're going to type in our name. Type in the account name, which is going to be the same for me. My password, which if I don't fat finger it. And you can really see how that lag is. Go ahead and click continue. Okay, go ahead and click continue again. Now, I would recommend everybody here actually go through this if you do plan using this as a real desktop. Um, or, you know, actually use vir you know, virtual machine. But in my case, being like I said, I'm just going to burn this in the end. So just keep clicking it. I disable Siri. It gives me a little more resources, um, you know, when doing this. But you can leave it on or off, depending on your preference. If you want to use Siri, it does work. Um, so I don't see why not. And now that we're at the desktop, you're going to see it show up blank like this. Taskbar may not load up right away. Wallpaper may not. Again, as I stated before, resources. This is a very resource-hungry operating system. So if you're not dedicating a good amount of resources to it, it's going to be very slow and buggy. Okay. So now we got to the desktop. Perfect. Everybody sit there, give each other high fives because we're literally 75% done. Now, if you were to go ahead and reboot the system right now, you will reboot into a blank screen. It's just going to keep on trying to load, 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 and you're beat. Then you got to log back into this install CD, run a recovery to either get recovery back into it so you can log in or change things up or as I've done, just reinstall it because it's just so much faster at times. Well, I'm going to fix that problem for you because it seems like nobody else wants to tell you how to do this. First things first, system preferences, users and groups, log on options. Well, first we got to actually unlock it. Automatic login, choose your name, type in your password, and there we go. This will prevent you from getting to a point where you cannot log into the system. Again, this is a beta, so I'm pretty sure they're going to fix all these problems when it comes out later this year. But if you want to actually use this, test it out, use it for your app developments, whatever you want, you have to set automatic logon. If you do not do this, you're going to have to have uh, another reinstall. Okay, so now it's time to get the VMware tools installed. So let's go ahead and eject that. Go up to VM and go to settings. And then from here, we're going to go to CD DVD, click browse. We want the Darwin.ISO, not the Darwin Pre-15. Go ahead and click open and then we're going to click connected and then click OK. So now let's get this installed. Go ahead and double click install VMware tools. Click continue. Again, it's going to be a lot of continuing clicking and stuff like that. You will be prompted for security changes and I'll show you how to go ahead and enable that. But it would be just like any other Mac you've installed previously. If this is your first Mac installation, I recommend installing like Big Sur or what was it, the other one before, Catalina, whatever before it. Okay, click open security preferences, keep clicking that. Once it's all open, click the little lock down below. Type in your password and then click allow. 
Do not click not now because we're going to restart in a few seconds. Close everything out here and then we're going to click restart. And when we do this, everybody cross your fingers because if you did everything correctly, everything's going to work. Now again, before I hit the restart, make sure you have, you're able to have automatic log on. Otherwise you will not get back in. Okay. Click restart. And if you were successful, you'll be seeing the exact same screen I see, except one thing you're logged in. You didn't get black screened. You didn't get kicked from it. You have a desktop. It's full screen. Let's go bigger screen. Look at that. Now, like I said, there are probably a few issues you're going to have here. For example, let's go check the network. So as you can see here, the ethernet itself is not 100% working with this again, because we don't actually have all the correct drivers with it. Um, in this case, you can go ahead and renew it over and over again, and you're still going to fail it out. Um, that's just something me personally, I cannot do anything to assist anybody with, um, because we have to wait for the proper, um, I guess, non beta setup to come through with this. So unfortunately the internet does not function well with this. So I want everybody to know that I have not been able to find anything to fix the internet on this, but when I do, I will make sure I let everybody here know, but we went ahead, we got everything installed. You do have your Mac OS Monterey installed the beta. You can see what it's like. Honestly, to me, it just looks like, you know, the last one, big Sur, you know, with just a different background, but that's just me. So I hope you guys liked the video. I do hope this video actually helped out a lot more people out there because I had seen plenty of videos of people complaining that they couldn't get it to work or actually get up and functioning. And so far from what I can tell, I have the most up running version of you know, Mac on, the, on YouTube. So I want to thank you guys. Have a great day and I'll catch you on the next video.